Hello, welcome to my fashion channel. This is Star with the formal Moloru. Today I want to show you how to cut a beautiful sassy asymmetric outer neck top. And this is perfect for the other days or for summer. So if you're the first time on my channel, I make sewing look easy and I love to make classy, trendy, simple stuffs. So today I'm going to be needing my Ankara fabric, a contrasting plain fabric to go with it. I chose to use blue because the blue is highlighted on the fabric you see on my table. I'm also going to be needing my scissors, chalk, my tape and some elastic. So before we start cutting today's um, top, if you're new to my channel, you need to subscribe so you don't miss my videos as I post. And don't forget, you need to always turn on your notification bell as well so you see them as they drop. Don't forget, I love to read from you and feel free to give me your thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. So I'm going to be using 1.5 um, yards of Ankara fabric. So I folded this on the table already. As you can see, you can determine how much of the 1.5 you need. It depends on how long you want it. But for me, I'm using the full length of my Ankara fabric, as you can see folded on my table. So I'm going to fold into four. It's already folded into four. So the longer part, I want to be the length of the blouse. Okay, and the shorter part is going to be to the side. But you can decide to move it to the way you like. So for me, this particular top is going to be made in a way that you can wear two ways. You can turn the other way round and have the cross at the back or you can wear it having it in front. It's a very versatile top and I know you're going to enjoy wearing this. So let's get into today's class. So you see my fabric already folded and on the side of the table I've kept my crepe fabric, crepe satin, you can use any fabric. But make sure the fabric isn't too soft that it collapses on you when it's been worn. So now fold your fabric into four, like you're going to be cutting a flare. Make sure that um, it is equal at the edges. If you need to, you can get um, a pressing iron and iron it out. And note, you can also use English fabric. It can be crepe, it can be chiffon, it can be any fabric you want. I just love using Ankara fabric. So now, once it's folded into four, you're going to discover that one side is longer and the other is shorter. So the part that is longer is what you see and across is the shorter part of my fold. If you've watched my earlier videos on how I cut flare, you're going to see it's basically the same principle. Cutting this particular top and cutting the flare. So I'm going to get the circumference of my top as the bait or the top of the blouse. Okay, the asymmetric top because it has to have a part on top. So just above your bust area, that would be the circumference of the top. So I'm going to measure from the pointed angle, like you can see, I'm going to measure it systematically like you do with a flare. So you don't want to fuss over this. It's really simple, it's not tricky. So you measure according to what your bust really is. For me, I'm going to be using, I want this to be worn for by a size 12 to 18, even 20. And I need a circumference of about 42 inches at the top. So 42 inches, 44 inches is fine because I'm going to be using an elastic at the back to give it a good grip. So now let's measure the circle, what we're going to cut off from the top. And remember, you always have to measure from that pointed angle if what you measured is not enough then feel free you can always move down to make it wider but it's better to start small than expand then you know make it larger than you cut it too wide and you may not be able to do much about it so go little then big so now i'm placing my tape and i'm going to measure to start with six inches so from that point, the pointed area, keep your tape there and you just move it 
and you keep measuring six inches all around the square so get the chalk and trace connecting the dots so you want to make that a bit legible i don't know if you can see mine but even if you can't see on your own fabric you should be able to see that so now i'm going to get my tape and i'm going to measure all across those dotted lines that i've traced together okay and you see the way i cuffed my tape you don't just place it and make it go straight you need to follow the curve so if you follow the curve and it's whatever it gives you times four if it gives you what you need it's fine if it's too much then you need to move up and reduce it if it's too little then what you need is to come lower a little bit so remember i said i wanted 42 inches so what i got was not up to 42 inches so i'm going to just make it a little deeper with about one inch or half an inch it depends so i'm now expanding or widening the circumference of my top so now again once again i'm using the tape to measure to make sure that it's accurate so remember multiply by four whatever you get because this fabric is folded into four so now that i've gotten it and i'm okay with what i have on my fabric i am cutting that out like you see on the table so for this particular top you don't need to have any opening it's just going to be one straight fabric no joining at the side and that's why i love the top as well so now i'm opening that up so you can see that from that part is looking shorter what i told you earlier you can let that be if you want it to be like a crop top it's fine that length can work for you but for me i don't want it to be a crop top i want it to be a little longer so i'm going to be using the longer part as the blouse length so you can see already we have the jagged edges we have the asymmetric look at the bottom on a normal flare would have curved the bottom but this i did not curve so now i have the width of my top now we, are, we need to get two straps to make the strap the cross straps for this particular asymmetric top so i have my crepe already folded and i've added the feasible interfacing or the gum stay to give it to make it more firm but i don't want it moving all around and i cut that four inches wide by 25 inches long you can make yours longer and adjust as you go on so make sure your it's feasible interfacing is not too hard so that it's not it's not difficult to turn over after you must have stitched the side so before i am going to place the strap on this particular cut i need to add a band okay so i've also cut a band and my band that i cut here i made it four inches okay wide and i made it the length of the base or the circumference of the top you remember we had 42 so what i also did was to get the band 42 and i stitched i closed it while it was open then i fold to keep the stitches inside and i'm going to fix that round the top before i now decide to place the strap that i've already stitched but make sure that you stitch you make sure the stitch is in the middle okay because if it's at the side it may not look so the finishing may not be so good so i move the stitching in middle before i ironed it out so turn over iron out and make sure it's nice and flat before you now start to place so when we're going to be placing the strap i'm not going to be placing it straight this is the tricky part it needs to be slanted because it needs to go sideways okay so before i place the strap i'm going to stitch this band to the asymmetric top but i'm going to be leaving an opening at the back because i want to add an elastic the reason i'm adding an elastic is so that even if you a smaller size you can wear what it will do is it's going to just cinch the top together okay it won't be too loose on top if you are bigger it's just going to pull apart so if you do ready to wear this is an excellent um ideal what you can do with um your ready to wear clothes because it makes it multi-purpose it makes it a one size fit so i'm notching the both sides of the top and that serves as the end as a side of my top i just want to have a clear vision when i'm making adding the band now i'm also going to notch the center 
So it's very important to notch the center because it will also give you a good guide on how to place the strap and how to also fix the band so that everything can be centralized. So from that center point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my band and I'm going to leave an opening at the back measuring from the from the center to the right I will do about five inches then from the center to the left I'm also going to do about five to six inches it depends on how much elastic you want to add to your asymmetric um, outer neck top so do what works for you and it's okay there's no other fast rule so now I've added the band and you can see that's the opening so I'm going to get my um, one inch elastic so since I left about 12 inches um, opening I'm going to get an eight inches elastic band eight, inch, eight, eight inches sorry eight inches long elastic band and I'm going to add it before I now stitch on the band okay so get your elastic it has to be wide enough it shouldn't be tiny hence i'm using one inch wide elastic so after i've um fixed that i'm going to fix the strap at the back but i just also want to get a clear picture of how it has to be at the back so i'm going to fix my strap pin so that i can know what to do when i must have fixed the elastic so I'm folding, opening up my asymmetric top again, as you can see. So when you open that up, what it gives you is like a rectangle. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah, that's the beauty of sewing. Just something straight when you close up is like a flare and it changes the whole outlook. So I'm really folding well, properly. I'm folding back into four. Now I'm going to get a chalk and I'm going to just mark where the center would be. So from there, is going to guide me how I need to place my strap in the in front. That's very important. Don't forget that. So I also use the pin because sometimes when you use a chalk, it can't clean off. But with the pin, it stays there. So I want the width, the distance between the two bands. It can be what you want. It can be anything from three inches in between. If you want it more open, it can be like four inches or five inches. It depends on what you want to do. Okay, so from the center, measure the distance of how you want it to be. Initially, I measured about um, six inches in between, but I changed my mind and I made it closer because I wanted it to be really sassy and I didn't want the side interfering with the strap. So now I'm going to place my strap. And as I said, don't forget, you need to place it slanting. It needs to slant towards each side. So I'm using my pin. It's really slanted. You need to pay attention to the way you slant this, okay? So I've slanted it towards the, the first one towards the left and the next one towards the right. And it's going to go across um, each other. So like as I said initially, I wanted a bigger space, but I ended up making it smaller because I put the top on me and I thought I liked it better when it was close together. So when you see the finished look, you shouldn't be surprised that the opening was not as wide as what you have here. That's one thing about sewing. You can adjust as you go on. Your concept at the, end, at the beginning may not be what you stick to at the end. So you can always play around with um, whatever you decide to make. So now you can see the crossing. So you can just get a pin and hold in place because sometimes if you're not careful, if you don't use a pin to hold it in place, what happens is you now fix it without it being crossed. You know, you want that um, crossing in between. So the length I'm going to use from the front to the back is going to be 21. Now, depending on your size, if you're a bigger size, it could go for 20, like maybe size 20, size 24, you can go for 22 inches long. And if you're a smaller size, maybe a size six, a size eight, you go for a shorter length of strap. So maybe then 18 or 19 inches may be perfect. So remember, it's something you can adjust as you sew. So before you're going to do the final tacking, it's always necessary after pinning that you, you what's it called, wear on you before you do the final stitching or on the mannequin to see what it looks like. So at the back as well, I just want to get the positioning right. I don't want a situation where I will stitch, then I would have to 
um, taking the stitches out and a stitch again. You know, all those loosening can be really stressful. And sometimes also you can end up tearing or cutting your fabric when you are doing that. So make use of your pins and, you know, put on a dummy or yourself to see that it's perfect. So you can see me holding it straight out and I'm folding again so that I can get the center at the back because from that center, I can measure both ways having equal distance from the middle to fix my strap so that it will not be tilting to one side. Many tailors, when they make clothes, don't pay attention to this. And that's why sometimes you make your clothes and it's not just looking right or it doesn't, it's not making sense or it's not what you want. So you really need to take your time when you make clothes. And so precision is important. Calculation is important. So from that center, I'm going to mark about five inches or six inches because of the elastic. If you're not adding elastic, then you can do four and a half inches or four inches. But because of the elastic I'll be adding, I made mine a little wider, so I'm making it six inches because the elastic is going to pull it back, okay? And when you wear it, it will open up. So five to six inches is fine. But like I say, do what works for you. It depends on where you want it to be placed. So I've marked with a chalk where I want to place my strap. So what I will do now is take off the pins, get my elastic, and I'm going to stitch inside the inside the um, band. So I'm just going to open up. And at that point where I stopped the stitching of the band to the asymmetric top, I'm going to get my pin and pin inside. So I'm going to go so I will stitch on that, hold it down, or use your pin to hold it together. Make sure your band is folded into two equal halves. Then now I'll do the same thing to the other side as well. So you pull the elastic and you just get a pin and hold it down. So when you're stitching, pull as you stitch and it will just um, fit into your outer neck asymmetric top. All right, so you see that's what I've done. So when I'm going to be stitching, I would pull. Now it's done, as you can see. All right, so I fixed that in and voila. Our lovely sassy summer top it's ready to be worn so what you need to do now is give it a good iron fold the edges and you are done so you see what i talked about the versatility the elastic the elastic at the back makes it wearable by different sizes so it's a one size fit so that's all for today's video i hope you enjoyed watching my video if you did please don't forget give me a thumbs up and till i come here with next week is bye from me